Yo! What's going on guys? This is Wondergasm and today I'm back in Toronto. Once again I've had too much coffee, there's a fly in the room. We'll forget about that though. Today I'm going to be doing one of our most requested videos and that is what settings do I use to shoot my landscapes? So, without further ado, let's get right into it. Let go! Yeah, I put a hat on because my hair was whining out. Anyway, so what settings do I use on my camera when I'm out and about sniping landscapes? This is pretty easy to answer. I'm going to run you guys through a few little different settings I use. But by the end of this video, hopefully, you'll be able to snipe some absolute landscape heat using these settings. I don't know. This is just what I use. Again, I'm not a professional photographer. I'm just some noob with a Canon. But yeah, let's do it. So first up, and most importantly, I always, always, always shoot on a manual setting. If I ever see any of you guys out and about shooting on auto or auto with flash, even worse, people who use flash in the middle of the day, like, don't talk to me. Anyway, let's let's go into manual settings. So manual settings are important because, <laughs> manuals, why are they important? Manual settings are important because it allows you to adjust every single shot to the scene or landscape that you're in. Minute to minute, second to second, the light throughout the day can change, the settings can change, and so you need to be able to adapt to that. I'll probably do another video after this on how to actually change your manual settings on a camera, but for now, let's just say you assume you know how to use manual so when I get to a place let's say I, I find the shot I want I'll adjust my exposure which is a combination of ISO aperture and shutter speed I don't know what I'm talking about anymore f-stop so I'll normally keep my f-stop at a medium range so I'll have it between 8 and 12 14 because when you're shooting large landscapes such as like a mountain area you want a bigger percentage of the photo to be in focus. You don't want to just be focused on one tiny aspect and have the rest of the shot be soft. Unless that's what, you, unless that's what you're going for. Like sometimes I'll do that on purpose. I'll focus say on a branch or something and have the landscape behind it just to bring something to the foreground. In which case you can bring the f-stop down a little bit. But I'm not going to ramble on too long. Basically I keep my ISO as low as possible which is something you should be doing anyway. Get out of here buddy. I'll keep my shutter speed, you know, fairly fast unless it's darker in the day. And I'll keep my f-stop around 8, 12. There are situations where that will change up but in general that's what I'll go for. In fact, let's run through some different settings that I've used on photos now. Next up, I will always, always, always manual focus. Uh, again, I don't, I think I have some sort of vendetta against auto settings, auto focus. Like, I never really use that. Maybe on portraits with a, with a 50 mil, but for landscapes, manual focus. I like to choose the spots in the image that I want to focus in on, especially if I am using a lower f stop. Just, you know, allows you to be more creative and just sort of play around with the focus, what's in focus, what isn't. And it just brings another aspect to the photo. So, I'll always, always be using manual focus. So, you'll see me like sitting there with the camera, twisting, very tight man just brings back some memories you know color profiles now every single camera should have a selection of color profiles and what this does is even if you're shooting in raw it will apply certain settings to the image so that once it's saved it will come out looking like that you guys might vary on this but i'll always 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 shoot and record in neutral in a neutral setting so it doesn't basically allow the image to be as flat as possible so when it does come out and it's saved as a raw file and it's in your computer you have a lot more avail options a lot more availability this isn't a fucking date now you have a lot more you know what i'm trying to say you have a lot more options when it comes to editing you're not editing over a pre-edit like i said before in my old video you want your photo to be as unedited and original as possible so when you do do color corrections there's a lot more data there for you to play around with and it's less like putting makeup on top of pre-applied makeup you've just got a nice clean slate to work with now it might make your images look fairly boring in pre-production but after post-production they're gonna look Okay, number four, whenever I get to a location, I will always adjust the warmth of the image manually. So I won't have it on like a automatic white balance and I won't have it on say like a setting, just like you have like five pre-settings that you can use. I'll always adjust the warmth. I'll take a few shots, tweak the warmth and then till I get to the, till it gets to the point that I like. So I always take a few shots before I sort of start taking my photos seriously, look at the warmth in each shot and sort of bring it up or down how I want it to look. Because again, this can vary from every single scene that you go to. Like right now it's quite sunny outside, so I'd probably drop the warmth a little bit, but not too much. Uh, if it was a dull gray day, I'd probably put the warmth up again. Wherever you go, it's gonna change. Inside, outside, whatever you need. But learning to adjust your warmth manually is something that comes in very, very handy. Okay, finally, obviously, I'm shooting in RAW. Because if you're not, I've already told you, just stop. Just stop, man. Why you stop shooting in JPEG, please? 
for love of everything that's good in this world, stop shooting in JPEG. That's all I have to say. So just to wrap that up, guys, manual settings on the camera, manual warmth, manual focus, shooting raw, and most importantly, use a neutral color profile. That's all I have to say. These are the five basic settings that I use when out and about shooting landscapes. There's not much more to it. A lot of it is in the post-production, but the more work you put in pre, the better your end result's gonna be. So yeah, I guess that's all I have to say. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, don't stop sending me video ideas. I do listen and I do like to make videos that you ask for. But yeah, it's been great. It's been such a great adventure this last three minutes of my life. Thanks for coming. Don't forget to subscribe. Peace. Oh